Chapter Number Five Into the Stars. Coffee winced as something burned across her skin. There was a thunderous boom, so loud it shook the entire tent and a flash of white gold light. It took her a moment to process the string of fresh pain, the warm tickle running down her forearm as beasts and beast keepers alike yelped in surprise. Her vision swam for one long beat, and she blinked several times before it came back into focus. Slowly she took in the scene before her. A nearby ant table had toppled over. Its once white linen cover was now swathed in the dirt. Part of the table was scorched, black, and near her feet the ground was speckled with something red, too bright to be blood. She realized after a pause that it was wax, candle wax, and she looked closer. She saw it had gotten everywhere, even on her arm. That explained the pain, but she didn't understand what had happened. Seconds ago, that candle had been quietly flickering in its gilded candelabra. Now only the tiny flames flickering on the ground remained. It was as if the candle had exploded. She looked around, confused. The candle had burst at the same moment she had exhaled, but surely that was a coincidence. It had to be. There was no other possible explanation, but she felt strange. Her skin, uncomfortably hot before, was now clammy, and the bottoms of her feet were tingling the way they did when she sat cross legs too long. The longer she stared. At the candle sizzling remnants, the harder it became to ignore the glistening forming in the black of her mind. Did I do that? No, of course not. It was a preposterous idea, illogical, and yet she remembered the building pressure in her chest, followed by that brilliant sense of release. A warmth had coursed through her body, rushing up her limbs, then out through her hands. Something had happened, but she didn't know what. And the longer she considered that, the more uneasy she became. I did do that. I caused that. Most of the other beast keepers were still staring in bewilderment at the place where the candle had been. A few were looking around it, trying to find out what had caused it to be combust. Coffee felt a single pair of eyes on her and looked up. Mama, her mother was the only person in the hammock not looking. At the rain candle, but at coffee there was sheer terror in her gaze. Order, Baz, who still stood in the middle of the tent, shouted the command at the top of his lungs, then glared at the little fires as though he meant to douse them with admonishment. One of these you idiots, you will learn to watch where you step and quit knocking things over. Everyone will remain calm and escort the animals outside in single file. He turned to a burly. Beast keepers beside him. Those who run to the well and fetch some water, Gwala, take Rashida to the post. I will be out in a moment. Coffee's gaze shot to Diko, then froze beside her. The Jokomoto had suddenly gone unerringly still as he eyed the growing fire. There was an unmistakable light look in the lizard's yellow gaze, a hunger. At once, Coffee dropped the lead to his harness. We need to go out. She practically tripped. Over her own feet as she backed away from him, somewhere in the hammer she thought she heard a gasp. We all need to get out right now. In her periphery, Buzz scowl grew more menacing. Shut up, girl! He growled. There is no need to. I am telling you, we need to leave. Coffee voice rose to an octave, but she couldn't help it. She tore her gaze from Buzz to stare back at Diko. The Jokomoto had not yet moved, and there was a stubble. Red gold glow just beneath his scales. Please, she looked over her shoulder. Please, everyone needs to. Someone grabbed her roughly by the arm, and she found herself face to face with Baz. His face was contorted with rage. He either hadn't noticed Diko or didn't care anymore. I said, "Shut up!" He hissed through his teeth. This is my zoo, not yours. I decided who leaves his tent when, not you. You foul little. It happened without warning. There was an air-splitting shriek. Social several beast keepers dropped to their knees at the sound of it. Coffee felt Baz release her, and she fell.
to the ground as the entire hammer shook again and a blaze of light filled the space. The hairs on the back of her neck stood on end, and as she curled into a ball and covered her head. A long scream punctuated the air, then set off a chorus of others. Head still bored, she listened to the sounds of pounding feet and panicked animals running around her until she dared to look up when she did. Her heart stopped. Deco. He was now in the middle of the tent, illuminated as though he were standing over some invisible white light. Fire erupted from his mouth in the horrible yellow gold waves, scorching everything in reach. He would burn the entire tent down. Coffee. Coffee looked to her right. Jabir was standing on the other side of the tent, he looking around as his dog surrounded him and whined. His eyes were surging as he grew frantic. Coffee had opened her mouth to call his name when one of the gorillas barreled towards her and forced her to roll out of his path. When she sat up again, she couldn't see Jabir anymore move. There was a stab in her ribs as someone tripped over her, toppling to the ground with another scream. She doubled over the hamas. Air was growing thicker and darker by the second. Harder to breathe and more difficult to see through. To her right, the Guamala now abandoned trotted in nervous circles until it knocked down the tent's central pole and the whole structure gave an, an ominous shudder. A metallic tinkling intermingled with new screams as hundreds of the pitching stakes outside uprooted, unable to bear the tent's new strain. Coffee stared up at it in horror. Get down. Someone yanked her to the floor as pieces of the crimson tent began folding in on themselves, catching flame with the alarming speed. A body covered hers, shielding her from the worst of the falling debris. When Coffee turned her head, her face was inches from another mama. She would have somehow gotten to her. Stay behind me. Mama said, crawl. She gestured her coffee to follow her across the rugs on hands and knees as the animals and the beekeepers trapped inside the burning tent continued screaming. The tent's exit had already collapsed and the more pieces of it were still caving in. Several feet away on the other side of the tent there was a gap where the edge of the hammers had slightly lifted from the dirt. It was a small opening but if they could slip under it. Beneath her bits of broken glass cut into coffee's palms and knees, plumes of smoke filled her lungs with every raged breath she took she the fire worsened hotter still but she didn't stop to her dismay the gap in the tent seemed to be getting farther not closer fresher embers danced around her face and she waved a bloodied hand to bat them away gods she sprayed please don't let my hair catch a terrible ringing filled her ears as she opened her mouth to call out to mama and took into a mouthful of acrid heat instead. Her mother's sillet, still crawling just ahead of her, was growing fainter, harder to discern amid the smoke and the bits of tent falling in around them. Coffee tried to stake another breath, but it was only a dry wheeze. It burned, she winced again as someone stepped into the back of her feet. Any minute now she knew her body would reach its limits. She wouldn't be able to go on. Coffee. Mama shouted her name from somewhere in the darkness, hold on to me, but it was already too late. Coffee couldn't see or feel anything but smoke and blood. Her head was growing fuzzy now, and the world tilted as she fell forward. She waited for the pain, the inevitable collision with the ground, but it never came. There was a loud crash as a new section of the tent imploded. Another long, agonized scream, strong arms caught her, half pulling, half dragging her out into the cooler night air. Coffee. The world was still dark and blurred, but Coffee felt someone gently slapping her cheek and trying to force her upright. She blinked hard and found Mama staring down at her. Get up, we can't stay here. Coffee inhaled clean air and the world righted itself. They were outside now, mere feet from the burning hammer. No sooner had she stood than Mama grabbed her arm and broke into a spirit. The animals, Mama said, between strides helped me with them. Coffee looked behind them. The hammer was now completely ablaze, a great fury heap spreading fast to the other parts of the night zoo's ground. She heard the bleast 
Snarls and shrieks of caged beasts at his sneering heat reached them, and her stomach heaved. Quickly, Mama pointed coffee towards the aviary, while she reached towards a pen and panic kudus. Coffee didn't stop to think as she yanked the doomed cage doors open and let the birds soar up into the night in a rainbow of feathers. A pair of beast keepers watched in confusion before they understood what she was doing and darted away to help other animals. Coffee freed the chimpanzees, a baby warihopo, and then a zebra. She was so lost in the pandemonium that at first she didn't hear the whooping. When she did, her blood ran cold. Warriors, of course, no doubt they had seen the smoke and flames from the down in the city and came to investigate, she shared it. The Kosa's warriors, the sons of the six, were known for their compassion. Suddenly, Mama was at her side again. We must leave. Mama's voice was tight. Eyes wide. Now, Coffee jolted. What about our debts? Mama grabbed her by her shoulder, her grip almost painful. We cannot stay here. She pressed what just happened in the tent. If Baz realizes what you really did and what you really are, you will never leave this place. What you really did and what you really are, the words sounded odd, somehow wrong, but Coffee didn't have time to dwell on them. As Mama tore off across the night zoo lawns, pulling her in tow, her legs screamed in protest with every stride, but she pushed to stay on Mama's heels around her brief images slashed by in vivid color. It seemed the rest of a night zoo creatures had been freed, stampeding around the lawns looking for escape too. Several more fires had broken out of their grounds and the air was punctuated with the sounds of not only animals but beekeepers too. Coffee shirted. At her gaze sweeping the ground's perimeter, she flinched as her feet began to tingle again and this time she felt an internal tug just beneath her navel as something shot through this her once more. She turned her head in the direction the wave of relief flooded through her air. A giant brick wall surrounded the night zoo but there was a section of the wall where creeping vines hung down in the thick robes. Mama. Coffee pointed towards the vines, following her gaze, her mother nodded, changed course, they stopped together at the base of the towering wall, a climb. Mama glanced over her shoulder, they were almost there, but probably for more seconds, Coffee didn't hesitate. The vines formed in a curtain of a deep green as she twisted one of the stalks around her bare foot and used it to hoist herself up. She reached as high as she could, but stinging pain uh, lanced through her palms, she pulled her hands away. The wine was stained dark with blood. Her hands were scratched from crawling over the debris in the hammer. Hurry, said Mama. My hands are cut up. Mama ripped two strips of the hem of her tunic, wrapped these around them, coffee a bit, and tried again. This time when she grabbed the wine, the pain was manageable. The pull below her navel was still there, urging her on as she hovered herself up the wall inch by inch. It seemed to take a century, but gradually the top scent came to view. The stars above twinkled through the rising smoke, and Coffee used them as her guide. Reach, she told herself. Just keep reaching. Don't stop. Mama called from below, and the surge of profound relief overtook Coffee as her bandaged hands finally found purchase on the ledge, a flat stone surface just wide enough for her to have onto and perch like a bird. She looked down, expecting to see Mama right behind her, and triumph turned to terror. Mama was still several feet down, frantically climbing the vines and looking over her shoulder with a panicked expression. Coffee followed her gaze, uh, trying to understand her throat uh, tightened as her eyes finally found what Mama's already had. Two young men in plain brown kaftans were running across the lawns and towards them with purpose, with silhouettes blurred against the blood orange glow of the roaring fire at their back. Sons of the six came to stop them. Come on, Coffee leaned over the wall ledge as far as she dared, and fingers outstretched, take my hand. But if Mama had seen or heard her, she gave no sign of it. Her eyes were darting back and forth like a hare caught in a trap, looking from the veins to the approaching warriors to the vines again with visible panic. 
She made a desperate sort of half leap and it caused her as she slipped farther down the vines. Mama, please, Kofi reached aware that if she extended much more, she would fall forward as it was her body was already teetering. Finally, Mama seemed to have understood. She looked up and reached for Kofi's hand, oblivious to the small black stone hurling her away. With the horrific crack, it connected with the back of her skull. A soft sound escaped her lips as her eyes rolled back to expose the whites, and Kofi knew what was about to happen. No, no. Their fingertips grazed that came apart. It seemed to take a thousand years for Mama to fall to the ground in a crumpled heap. Coffee waited, heart pounding, but her mother didn't move. Caught her. Someone shouted the words from far away, but Coffee didn't look up and find the speaker. Too dark blood was pulling in the grass under Mama's head like a crown. It seeped into her head, wrap, soaking the black twist sticking out from it. In that moment, Coffee understood. It was a terrible sense of comprehension. She would felt when Baba's eyes had closed on this cot so many years ago when she'd realized he hadn't gone to sleep but to some place much further away, a slow dread claw it weighs up her inside, seizing her third throat with long, vicious fingers. No, she stared at her mother's body, trying to process it. No, no, no. A stone collided with her shoulder, sending fresh pain ricocheting through her body and jolting her back to the present. Yet again, something tugged her core, compelling her to turn away from the night zoo and toward the open fields beyond. She felt a distinct kind of tearing within her, two things at war and pulling her in different directions. The foreign feeling in her core was demanding she leave. Mama's body begged her to stay, mind over heart heart or mind. She faced the lemongrass fields before her high weight. Coffee stirred and looked over her shoulder. One of the warriors was close now. His dark eyes fixed on her with a hunter's focus. He was hunting, hunting her. She swayed on her purse, willing herself not to fall forward. Go, it was a single word in her mind, but it was sure repeating itself like Ripples on a pond's smooth surface. Go, she made the decision then, mind over heart. Her stomach lurched as she leaped from the ledge into the stars, praying they would catch her as she fell.